Welcome to the second half of Sheet Metal Basics in Space Claim. In this section we'll take a look at various ways to move a flange and pull on flanges as well as edge treatment and flat patterns. Let's say we don't want this small flange 90 degrees from the flange it's sitting on, but we want it at a different angle. So we use the Move tool to reposition it. The way we do that is click on Move and then select any face of that particular bend that I want to rotate. Now I've selected the outside face. When I rotate it in the blue direction, I click and drag. You see the location of the flange starts to change, but the radii still stays the same. Before I let go of the mouse, I'm going to hit the escape key and that will cancel out of that move. Where you select the face when you want to rotate a bend is important. If I were to click in white space, click here, sometimes the move tool may not be in the correct location. If the move tool doesn't show up in the correct location, for example, maybe I want to rotate this bend, and it's showing up, the move tool is showing up here, but I really want to rotate it down below, all you have to do is click in white space, and then click on this, per, on this gray face closer to the bend that you want. Now, let's show what happens when I rotate that same flange, but instead rotate it from the inside. Now the location of it stays the same, but it's my pivot point of rotation that's changing. So I want to rotate a certain degree. Before letting go of the mouse, I'll hit the space bar and type in a value. There's 315 degrees. So that's how you would rotate a flange that already exists and how you would rotate it to a specific angle you want. What about creating a new flange at a non-90 degree angle? It's simple to do. So what you want to do is first select your edge and then somewhere on your model exists the direction that you want to pull in. Let's say I want to pull straight up or normal to this face that I'm hovering over. After I have that edge selected I hold down the Alt key in my keyboard, select that face, and you'll see that the small blue arrow on that edge changes directions. Now I can pull straight up and I've got a flange going in the direction normal to the face that I've selected. A few more things we'll look at is how to create a joggle and a hem. Th these are all done with the pull tool. You'll notice whenever I've selected edges and pull on them I've always been pulling 90 degrees. Now before I, in order to escape out of this I'll hit the escape button on my keyboard. If I click on that blue direction that goes 0 or 180 degrees and start to pull out, I'm creating a joggle. Now let's go over to another edge and do the same thing, but we'll go, this time we'll go 0 degrees, we'll go into the model. You see it starts creating a hem. If I go out, I get a joggle. If I go in, I get a hem. If you want to change the type of hem you have, just select it, even if you're in the pull tool or select tool, it doesn't matter, and you can change the type of hem you have. The last thing we'll look at are the different types of edge reliefs in a model. Now to show these, I'm going to add a couple more flanges, in fact I'll make some partial flanges on the model and show the different types of edge reliefs. So I'll pull straight down on that edge or on that flange, I'll make another one over here, pull straight down, and I'll put one more partial flange over here. So I'll use all these to show the different types of edge reliefs. When I zoom in and click on the yellow, I can change it to a square. This one is circular. We'll make the third one a rip. The fourth one will be a circular, and we'll come over here and change this type to smooth. So now you'll see the difference when I show the flat pattern. Speaking of flat patterns, you'll see how easy it is. Grab any planar face on the sheet metal body and click unfold. Now when I zoom in, you'll see the difference on all the edge reliefs. Here's the ripped, here's the circular, and here's that smooth. Now you'll see one area that shows up in bright red. This is where in the flat pattern something overlaps. 
so there's an obvious problem. There's a few ways to fix this. One way is to go back into the solid model and maybe grab an entire edge and move that over. So let's try that. Using the move tool, I'll grab that entire edge, shift that over, and now when I go back into the flat pattern you see that it's gone. And the very last thing I'll show is how you put specific dimensions or how to locate flanges a certain distance from each other. Let's say that I want the entire right hand side to be a certain distance from the left hand side. Well I'm going to put this in a view that's easier to see. I'll do a plan view. And it's the entire right hand side so that I will just box select. I'm already in the move tool. You could do it either or. You could select the move tool first like I did or select it after. Then we need to re-anchor the move tool according to where I want the measurement to be. Let's say you want, you know what your outside measurement is going to be, the total envelope size of this folded box. It's in the red direction that I want to create a ruler dimension. So having selected red dimension and the ruler dimension, I would click to wherever that surface is I want to locate this and type in the value I want. We'll say five and a half inches. Now I know the total width of this is five and a half inches. And so that's how you can achieve either inside or outside dimensions using the, the ruler dimension. So this concludes the basic training of sheet metal. Thank you very much for watching.